check, 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 check. We are back, y'all. Doing the interview segment of uh, Dom episode, Dom FM episode four with Olay. Is it DJ Olay or just Olay? Uh, just Olay. Okay, cool. I'm gonna say. Well, hold on, actually. Can you say that again? I'm sorry. It's just Olay. I must. I did not have your mic on. Look at that. Boom. <laughs> All good. So, this is my first DJ guest, yes. which is crazy. I haven't interviewed people. In a few years, me and my buddy used to have a podcast right before quarantine, and then we stopped because people couldn't see each other anymore. <laughs> so you are my first, but well, you're my first official DJ, uh, special guest DJ mix, and my first uh, interview with the DJ. So let's clap it up for Ole, y'all. You feel me? I need to get a little sample. <laughs> thank you thing. for having me. I re- first off, I want to say thank you so much. Yes. You supported me. I mean, obviously, we met last year because I started Dom FM. I did the lot radio early 2023, and then I was like, oh, I can just record this in my room. Yeah. And so I feel like you supported very early on. I mean, shoot, I got like four. this is. Yeah, I've been watching you for a minute. Yeah. So yeah. I, I and so like when you originally followed me, I was like, who is this person with all these followers showing love? <laughs> I had no, you know, Instagram be on like some bot stuff. So I was like, yeah, who knows who this person is? But you've been <laughs> consistent. You always, you just always show love, and I, I just want to. Thank you for doing that. Likewise, thank you. Seriously, you're not. You're, I feel this. I feel the support as well. Nah, your mix was. I listened to one of your mixes <laughs> the other day too, and I'm like, I just love the sounds. Yes, I was actually listening to your mix yesterday too. So, support you is, oh, is you, it's mutual. The one for tribal sounds. No, this the, your uh, recent. Oh one. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That one honestly is probably my best mix up here for real. Still getting adjusted, <laughs> you know. So that was actually really good. I really appreciate you. Thank and you so that, much. And uh, that that one mix by Lori. Um, you know what I'm talking about? The um, here we are. The oh, anywhere. Oh yeah, the anywhere. Leons. Hey, yes, hey, yes, shout out yes. to Leons out of Atlanta. I was trying to sing it. Oh, I had been sleeping. <laughs> I don't know why I've been sleeping on Leons, but I just I was like I need to play more Leons. Actually, it was it was DJ Shannon who played Leons the other day at uh, Jupiter Disco. Yeah. And I was like I need to listen to more Leons. So <laughs> that was I played like two songs. I've of his been on there. like tapped in for a while. Yeah. He's really good. Yeah. But that mix. I, mean, I appreciate that, you. That was fire. That, and yeah. that's that's more my life. I get to I start off around like 120, then I get to around <laughs> the 140 area. And I I try, it, I, I try to build up too. So yeah. I get it. Yeah. Every so every time and it's tough because I feel like especially we're just playing like a lot of obviously more within the edit range or whatnot. And mm-hmm. sometimes I'll just play the original song, but yeah, just trying to play everything. But this is my first. So I'm going to be asking uh, this question to all the DJs that come up here. Okay. So what has been your most challenging experience as a DJ? So that can be from the start. Okay. That can be from last week, whenever. Um, I think my most challenging thing would be... Hmm, um, I'm going to say if there's one experience in particular, too. One experience? Mm-hmm. Well, I had this really crazy experience... Um, in Harlem once where I got attacked by a few bouncers. Serious? Yes. And for me, it's been, that was like the most tra- traumatic experience. Were you me. living out there? Was I living? Yeah. Up, up no, I room? was actually, I had a gig out there. Damn. Shout yes. Out. Okay. But I'm, no, not, not shout to that. I'm, my, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm mixed up right now. Yeah. I had a gig out there. Um, <laughs> someone actually got attacked at the event and I was heading out yeah. and I got like, I got caught in the crossfire. In the middle? Yeah. I'm so basically. sorry. And one of the bouncers, like, I just went up to him. I was like, hey, like, can you apologize at least for, you know, putting your hands on me? Yeah. And um, he was just, like, you know, really rude about it and pretty much, like, tried to force me to, like, get off the step or whatever. And, like, it just kind of, like, why escalated. you were DJing? This was right right after I okay. finished DJing, and I was just like, you know, you're you came here to like make sure that everybody was, suppo- you know what I mean, like as be bouncers, safe and everything, do your sure job, yeah, safe. exactly, yeah. But like, no one felt sa- safe that night, so like, it just really things just escalated pretty quickly. You know, when I think about bouncers and just safety in general of club spaces and, and party spaces, mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes the DJ is the last person to be thought of. Yeah. And so it's just like, I had an experience one time where a bouncer just like wouldn't let me come through the back to bring all my equipment in. I'm just mm-hmm. like. Yeah, I feel like we like deserve a little bit more respect in those type of environments. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, like I we're, mean, 200%. We're, we're there to like make sure everyone is enjoying themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's our job. So yeah. it's just like, 
I feel like that for me was just like probably the most traumatic. I'm experience. so sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, and that was the most challenging thing for me so yeah. far. You know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I just think so much about, especially as a black woman. And I, and I was you know and I was about I mean? to t- and I was about to yeah. touch on that. I feel like it, it, it's annoying because I'm someone who goes out of his way to just make sure everybody's good in general, yeah. but especially when I'm seeing a woman, a black woman, especially in those club environments, because I know how men can be dismissive, whether that's them being drunk, whether that's them even just working and being sober and just being an all, just an asshole. Right. And so it's annoying when I hear stuff like that, especially from my femme DJ homies, where I'm mm-hmm. just like, we're the most important part of the party. Right. Take exactly. care of the DJ. Like that's one thing. That, that's the biggest thing. I'm like, Take, and that's something that we're really working on back home in Louisville, Kentucky. But mm-hmm. I feel I thought New York would be, and it, it's there's spaces that yeah. are really good there's about it. There's definitely spaces, you know what I mean. Um, but not all spaces are like that. Not at all. I'm so sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I just I I think I just had to learn from that experience and you know know how to move accordingly. You know, moving forward. Yeah, no, nah, most <laughs> definitely. I mean, so what do you do different within that? Um, I just honestly, like, I just make sure that some, like, I at least have people with me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because at that time, I didn't really have, my friends were there, but they ended up leaving right after yeah. my gig. And I feel like if they were there, if they were present, things would have kind of, like, yeah. went differently. Yeah. And I feel like they yeah. could have played, yeah, yeah, nah, because you can't treat a bunch of people like that. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately. It'd be truly awful. People are just, like, I mean, I don't know if I can curse on here. Please. But, but when, I, when I tell you... <laughs> I didn't free Palestine. I didn't say anything on this. So talk <laughs> how you want to. Shitty. Yeah, They're no, really they shitty. definitely are. And you know, so I just honestly, and also, I don't, I don't just play anywhere anymore. You, you know can. what I mean? You really. So can. I have to be very selective. Damn. Yeah. I'm so, so that's sorry another about thing. That. Like, especially if I have to be by myself. Yeah. Like I, I, if I'm going somewhere, I'm not familiar with the people there, or like, you know what I mean, yeah. the crowd, or just like. You know, I just make sure that I bring someone along with yeah. me. But most of the time, I'm usually familiar, you know, because yeah. now I feel like I have to be just so things like that don't if happen. I, I, I'll, I'll say this because I used to, one of my homegirls a DJ back home. Yeah. I would just always kind of just like, I'm like, if you need me, I'm here. <laughs> so if I'm ever at one of your sets, yeah. I'm gonna just, I, I don't go too overboard because obviously, like, I'm like, you know, yeah. I, you sound like you can stand up for yourself, but like yeah. within the case of like if you need just like kind of uh, you know backup because yeah that I, night I actually broke a rib. I cr- well, I didn't you break serious? a rib. I cracked a rib. Yeah, and I injured my neck, so I had to go to the hospital. Did the you next sue day. them? I attempted, and it just like they. So it's so funny because like right after I went to the cops, I went to the precinct, I filed a report, Maybe I'm bullshit, and though. they it seemed like they didn't want to like yeah Maybe they were on bullshit, bullshit so. I kind of just had to like take things in my own hands and because I found out that they tried to like uh, throw out my report. You s- so I had to go to the city. I had to like speak to someone to try and get that report just so I have a copy of it. You know what I mean? It was just so much. And I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's okay. But you know, you live and you learn. And so I will never put myself in a situation like that. I won't like you know. I won't you know. Put myself no, I in, you, yeah. You just can't DJ everywhere. I can't just like, I yeah. You. I can't just put myself out there anywhere. Damn. You know, I have to respect my. Her, you know, I'm gonna say something for you. First off, fuck that bouncer. <laughs> Second off, fuck. <laughs> I may block yeah. that out because yeah. they be tripping on YouTube and Instagram. But that's so. That's just. I I hate hearing stories about that because DJs are already kind of just you know what it is in New York you've been up yeah, there yeah and so we're already underpaid at a lot of places mm-hmm. shoot I'm still waiting on a payment for a spot that I DJ that two months ago I'm still waiting on payments too it's annoying yeah. like when I tell you the adjustment of being here is crazy but yeah. then you as a black woman it's, and I respect the ones that do pay you yeah right on time yeah because it's not a lot. Of it's the, not. Yeah, it's not a lot of And them. that's that's been an adjustment. I'm so used to just getting the money at the end of the night <laughs> or the next day. And so <laughs> it's like, come on, pay people on time. Right. Take care. And, that, and that's one thing I, I really, me and uh, so me and my girlfriend, she was on this on on the last episode, and we spoke on just safety within the club party, wherever, mm-hmm. or whatnot. Just like watch out, y'all. 
be yeah, careful. Be careful. Take care of the DJ, please, because that's something that's Protect not stressed. Protect the DJ, please. please. <laughs> we might have to make a T-shirt off that. Look, put that on the T-shirt, right? Golly, <laughs> Protect like, the DJ. Protect the yes. DJ. I might, I might yes. put that as you a might quote. have to do that. Yo, we might. Have, yo, yes, seriously, that's actually a good one. So I don't feel like we're protected enough. You know, walking out those doors and yeah. having to like, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. It just, I never, I never thought I would be in a situation like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, nah, so. I definitely feel you. Golly. Yeah. And that's something that like, I have a privilege of. Yeah. And it just, it, it messes me up when I hear it from the other side because it's such a, and you, I'm so, when you, so you went to Harlem, what area were you staying in at the time? Um, Where was I living? Yeah, or yeah, living. I was living in Elmhurst. In Queens, so, well, so you were like, like super far from home. No, too. not really. Um, oh, I guess that's like kind of top. Yeah, part I'm like right there, close to Long Island City. Okay, cool. So like Astoria area. Um, it's te- it's is when you think of Queens, because Queens is so like there's so many different. I'm in Ridgewood Queens. right now. Sorry. Okay, no. so I'm not too far from Ridgewood. Yeah. I, well, I wasn't too far yeah. from Ridgewood, so yeah. We're not giving her exact location right now. Y'all, yeah, so yeah. Be well, I ain't living there no more. I'm gonna so. say yeah. <laughs> But um, so I wanted yeah. to talk about because uh, when we originally started talking about you coming on Dom FM, yeah. Um, when I moved up here, I was like, "Hey, I'm living up here, and I know you have Philadelphia and NYC on your location yeah. on uh, Instagram." And so I want to talk about that transition from living up here in this. Mm-hmm. I honestly, I told a cop the other day, "This godforsaken city, I love it, <laughs> but it's it's a lot, you know." And yeah, it gets a, it's it's a hassle. Yeah, what, you know? what's I feel like everything can be a hassle sometimes. Yeah. living here in New York. Yes. And what, what what was that transition from going from living in New York City to now living in Philly? I honestly didn't have a plan to move. Yeah. I just kind of like knew my lease was up. And one day I was just like, let me just go online and see like how much rent is. I mean, how much like, you know what I mean? Places Tremendously are, cheaper. Yeah, like I was just curious and found out that it's much more affordable. So I decided to just go check out some places mm-hmm. and... um I have found a really nice spot. Um, my place now is like, it's a brand new building, um, new appliances, everything, first person to live in. Shout out to yeah. that. But here in New York, you just don't get that. You know what I mean? Like you are gonna pay, pay an arm and a leg just to like get what I'm getting right now. Oh, like so, when I tell you. Yeah, so I was just like, you know what? Let's just, let's just make this move. Like I'm just gonna go with my gut. I trust myself. You know what I mean? Something mm-hmm. told me it's time to go. You got to listen to that voice every yeah, time. Yeah, something every just told time. me it's just like, it's time to move on. And um, I, I've i pretty much moved more so for convenience because yeah. it's like parking. Um, like even in my building, you know what I mean? I feel like even washing clothes is a, is a hassle yeah. in New York. You if know you don't I mean? have that in your, yeah. Most places don't have washer and dryers, yeah. you know? And they don't have like And they still charge your arm and a leg. Like it's crazy. Yeah, so... I remember in my one apartment when I was living in Bushwick, I had to like pack my things up and go down the road, like either walk down the street, carrying that big ass bag, yeah. <laughs> laundry, and or I would have to like put in my car and come back and look for parking again. You know what I mean? Oh, so you were driving up here? Yeah, I, was, I had a car. You are I was brave. Here. Yeah, so <laughs> it was just it was just stressful. Also, like having a car is convenient in New York, but just like parking. Oh my god! You know what I mean? It's it's. It's a mess. So I, I have I have tickets that I still that are still unpaid. Hey, I'm like, can I say that? Yeah, I, mean, like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> I looked. He was like, yeah. It's just like, yeah. Yo. So I mean, I, I had I had a I saw I, I do this like staffing agency work, and they had me go out to a part of uh, not Philly, but uh, Pennsylvania, and yeah. I had to rent a car, and so I was like, I'll just take it back in the morning. Could not find because it was all the way in Manhattan. Yeah. And like I said, I'm in Ridgewood. And uh, it was like by Times Square. And I was like, yeah, I'll just take it back in the morning. <laughs> Could not find parking. Literally just had to take it back at oh. like midnight. Oh, trust me. There's been times I had to sleep in my car. And being a woman, you should not have to sleep in your car. Like, I mean, like, I've slept in my car plenty of nights in New York. Yes. Because, like, it's just overpopulated. You know what it's I mean? It's like to the point Too I can't even get cell phone. Here, yeah. yes. You know, and they, they don't have, like, my building. We have parking. But, like, not everyone can park their car. In that parking lot, in that parking, you know what I mean? Yeah. Space, I mean, the lot that they have. So it's just really stressful, you know what I mean? So there was nights I had to, like, sleep. Just imagine, like, coming home, right, from, like, running errands and then realizing you got to, like, let's say I had a meeting that day and I'm coming home, but I'm like, I'm going to get dressed really quick to, so yeah. I can head back out. Can't find parking. So you got to double park. 
your car, run inside, or you know what I mean? Or you just have to keep looking for parking, then you're late to wherever you gotta go. You know what I mean? Or you get a ticket, you either risk getting a ticket and the tickets or be risk expensive. being late. It's I got, annoying. I got caught jumping the turnstiles the other day and they charged Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> I, but I was at Delancey I'm Essex. Too I was being for an that. idiot. I'm way too punk for that. People would be like, just just go. And I'm like, I can't. I'll just, I'll pay. But I mean, honestly. <laughs> I'm too punk. Yeah. I, I I respect that because you end up paying for it in the end anyway. Yeah. So that's how it goes. <laughs> and so um, then I wanted to talk to you because I did that mix for your, uh, your yes, collective travel with sound. Yes, I heard the mix and it was really good. Y'all. I appreciate it you. It was good. Thank you so much. Cause, Thank um, you. I actually did it over here or whatnot because I was filling in for some buddies. Yeah. And uh, they were like, hey, can you fill in? I really didn't want to. But then I was like, actually, I need to record <laughs> this mix. I don't have any of my stuff up here. Oh, None really? of my DJ equipment. It's still back oh, home in Louisville. Oh, okay. So how and do you so, plan on bringing that back when i, t- like, I gotta find a permanent gonna, space gonna... so i've been subleasing okay, okay, okay i've been thugging it i ain't gonna lie i mean i'm, I'm not fine. mad at that i'm not you know what it is i've done here. that before you so know what I it is it. up here yeah. yeah so it's 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 cool i yeah. love being up here and the experience is beautiful it is getting to do not stuff like the, this I don't, I don't, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's winter. It could be the when I tell like not it's, the, you don't get the same. It's you know l- summertime in New York is different, and that's what I'm waiting for. Like, I honestly feel like our the summer like summers in New York mm-hmm. better than anywhere. Not two hundred percent. It'd be yeah. hot as hell and it smells like ass everywhere. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> like it's very humid. Oh yeah, the like, air is dry and it's all and it's all concrete <laughs> everywhere. So yeah, it's different. But now I love. Um, this is such a hated or love it place. Like some some yeah. days I'm like on a high. I hate it during the winter. Yes, I don't and I like hate going everywhere anywhere. In the winter. I'm, 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 I'm I hate anywhere. I'm a homebody though. I feel that definitely a homebody. Honestly, same. <laughs> like it's, during the summer, I'm not. But during the winter time in New York, I'm definitely a homebody. Don't don't ask me to go anywhere. I feel and it's because <laughs> it's such a process. Yeah, it's just to get up, dressed. go to the, and it's so cold. Yeah, New York is so cold. Yeah. I don't know why it's so That's cold. That's a double here. entendre for real. If you think about it, it's so cold. <laughs> yes, it's freezing. So it's yeah. like, as soon as you get outside, you just want to go back in. Nah, I mean, I definitely. I was already like that. Any, I feel like being a DJ. Yeah. Because for the most part, I'll go. I go. I go a lot of places just by myself. Yeah. And I'll sit there for like an I hour, love that. hour and a half tops. I yeah. just like to hear. I like. I like nightlife. I do too. You feel me? I do. So I'll just go somewhere but just to be there. I, that's the only time I will come outside is if it's like worth it. Yeah, you know somebody, what I mean? yeah. Like yeah. if the music is really good, I'm not just going to go anywhere. You know what I mean? So I, 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 yeah. I just don't like wasting my time. Nah. <laughs> well, and I think that's because we are DJs and you just want to yeah. hear quality music. Yeah, for sure. And that, sure. that keeps me going. Once I start hearing some bullshit, I'm like, dude, I'm tuned out of this. <laughs> I, I, I hate being that person, but like, I, I don't will, hate being I that person. I'm going to respectfully the back door the irish goodbye uh, what go they home. call it <laughs> i must say i was so salty i missed you all set at a cafe or zuli a few weeks ago oh my gosh yes thank um shout out to um Aunt. yeah yeah shout out to him he, he he's, he's really amazing. doing this thing he, he was telling me about how he built that up and he was just talking right. about starting somewhere and just because he said it wasn't really that crazy at first and then yeah he's been doing that for like six years he's been like doing that. his thing i'm really like i've been watching him for a minute too yeah so yeah yeah he's it definitely really big dope inspiration. To hear from him like you know for him to reach out to me and ask me to like you know be a part of that because that for me that was like special you know and i appreciate you because you put me on the list or you were but then i was like hey. i got a dj <laughs> tonight. Course, i was like talk. yeah and i because i never <laughs> at, unless i unless like we're, we, we have a better rapport with each other now yeah and I know that you're getting paid to say, I'm like, hey. Yeah. But I'm like, for the most part, like, when I was back, I used to hate doing it. I'm like, man, this, <laughs> you know, I feel that. Yeah. So, yeah. So, tell me what travel sounds. So, how did come back? Yeah. So, um, it's so funny how this idea even came about. I was just like, it was right after the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And um, I was in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> hey that's where you make some of the best ideas that is so true but like i was just like sitting in the shower and i was like thinking of like an idea something that like revolved around music yeah you know what i mean and i came up with this name travel with sound um and since then it's just been like I've been, I've been seeing I've y'all been, events in uh, philly too it's been involving yeah yeah nah, it seems so so you, you do are you is it just yours with the partner as well too um so i have so it's so funny because like I, you said, trust your gut, yeah. right? When I moved to Philly, I met my business partner, okay, Kiari. Um, and shout out Kiari. Yes, it was so funny because we were just like talking, and I just realized we had so much in common. Mm-hmm. And we had, I told him about you know my idea of travel mm-hmm. and sound and sounds emotion, which is like our monthly ser- um, party series. 
and he was just with it and yeah. he like he's just so like you know we're just we're like so exactly. the same we're the same person almost uh-huh. like when it comes to like business and stuff like that and we have we have like it's so easy for us to feed off each other you know that's, what I and mean? that's like, important yeah two minds mm-hmm. I, it's so crazy because like at first i was like i don't think i need a business partner but when he came you know when he came and he told me he was just like well how about we do this you know what i mean yeah. and how like how can i like he just started like just contributing yeah. to the brand it wasn't like force or anything yeah, it, it wasn't forced like, yeah, that's and good. and that's what i love about it you know what i mean and that's why i was just like i think that we will work really really well together you know what i mean he was like i i agree so from there we just kind of like just been working and building the brand and yeah i like the cohesive i, I just saw that uh the, the mix that you got dropped from L's is it who it is? Yes, L's. So I've known him for for a while. That's I met him, uh, he actually. So how we met is like he was a he's a photographer, mm-hmm. and um few well was it a few years ago? Sometimes I feel like it's been a long. It feels like twenty twenty is a because like what so right, since I, then, I mean pandemic. It was before yes. the pandemic, but it okay. just feels like it's been so long yeah. since like yeah. I don't know. I just feel like so much time it's yeah. just like passed. Um, but he did, uh, we did a photo shoot a while ago and that's pretty much how we met. And I, at the time I didn't know he was like into music. I didn't even know he DJed. So, um, doesn't everybody know? Yeah. It's so funny. Uh, but he's been DJing for a while, okay. for a long oh, so time. He's been tapped in. Yeah. He's been tapped in, but I had no idea. Yeah. Um, of, oh, sorry. Um, yeah. So like, I remember we had met up, um, we just kind of like was chatting and he was just like telling me how he's a DJ and how he like, you know, he saw that I was de- like, you know, mm-hmm. I was spinning as well. And so he's just like, hey, like, you know, I have this party at Casamaya. Would love for you to like come through, mm-hmm. and, you know, spend some stuff. And I was just like, you know, I'm down. But I had no idea. I thought he was just like hosting, you know, at first. Mm-hmm. Oh, so he was spinning then? Yeah, he okay. was actually DJing. And I was just like, oh, I thought you were just hosting. He's just like, no, I'm actually um i'm a dj yeah that's fine <laughs> i was like yeah that's really really dope so yeah we just it's it's been really dope to like kind of work beside him that's fine shout yeah. out to him. yeah shout out to uh your philly crew or whatnot yeah that's awesome i was just in uh new york he's oh so here. he's up here yeah okay cool well, i mean yeah. what's philly like an hour away Kiari's in uh based in philly okay cool. yeah cool i'm gonna say what's that an hour away philly like an hour and yeah, hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. I like Philadelphia, honestly. I love Philly, I'm honestly. It it's feel- kind of like a little small, yeah. like New York. Yeah, there's definitely a nice little house scene there, and I love that. That's cool. Yeah, so I I'm trying to in. every all the house DJs are trying to preserve that. Yeah, you know that's that space. Yeah, that they've created. Now, I, so. I gotta come up to Philly whenever you're hosting another event. Yeah, we were talking about doing something in the future. So yeah, yeah. I want to. I want to start. And I just. I love I, the, the first. I went to. I've been to Philadelphia like twice. And really? every time it just felt like a really like, you know, they say the city of brotherly love. And I yeah. really felt that people just chilling out on their front porches. It was beautiful. Like, <laughs> they I have love this. Uh, they have this thing. I can't remember the name of uh, what it's called, but they have people like literally at all the doorsteps. Everybody like it's like a street or block or something. Mm-hmm. Um, or I don't know if it's just like a neighborhood, but there's just a bunch of people just performing. And you have like people on their doorstep, like making music. That's super fun. You'll have them like, you know, some people they're just showing off their artist, you know, their. That's creative, super fun. Yeah. Um, like you have different performers. So it still feels homegrown. Musicians. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel it's really that. dope. Kind of rem- gave me that feeling of like New Orleans. Yeah. You know what I Shout mean? Shout out to New Orleans. Yeah. During the um, Mardi Gras. Yeah. Everyone's just outside. Just yeah. dancing. Having fun. You yeah. see all the different performers and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. That's kind of like how it is. Similar. I feel like a lot of places in America are losing that. For sure. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, but I, that's, that's what I love Philly for. You Shout know what I mean? I definitely want to tap Especially when the weather gets... uh warmer and the sun stays out yeah you later. definitely gotta come to philly like i love i mean i already love philly because i had a buddy who lived there he actually moved out to la yeah but that's why i would just stay with him and it was super cool <laughs> but yeah i wanted to ask you how you got into djing um so i actually have been um so i started actually performing um you know in front of people <laughs> i say that because like i've been kind of like playing around with djing for a while now mm-hmm. like since like college okay yeah but i had a friend um so right after um 
what was it the pandemic yeah. i started really taking it more seriously okay and i had a friend new year so what was that new year's eve we were just like I had some friends come over and we were all just jamming. One of my friends from Europe was in town and he Shots came by. Yeah, he's by his like, you know, um, his USB and just started like, you know, playing music and stuff like that. And we we're just having fun. One of my friends, she was just like, hey, like, do you want to do this gig? And I was just like, at the time, I didn't feel like I was prepared for it. That's but how like, it goes, though. Yeah, I was just like, yeah. But I said, yeah. yeah. I don't know why. You got to jump in the fire. But That's the best I, way yeah. to do it. That's the I was best just like, way yeah, to do it. I'll do it. But like, honestly, you know how some people go to actually do something and then they actually don't like fall through. Come, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, nah, like, most definitely. Yeah. So um, she came to me with this flyer. <laughs> And she was like, "Hey, like the fly- flyer is done and everything." And I was like, "Oh, so this is re- this is really happening." This is serious. This is yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So I. It was so funny because I didn't feel like I was prepared, but like I went out there, I did it, and that it's been two years now since I started. Actually, so that's when you started. Yes, yeah, been two crazy. years. Crazy. I've been DJing for like two years now. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I, f- I feel like I've been hearing so many stories about how people got super serious in the pandemic because that happened to me too. So I think mm-hmm. I started maybe 2018, 2019, but I was doing music. Okay. So I was making my own music and then I just was DJing was just like a side thing. Yeah. For me, it was just like fun. For yeah. Fun. Yeah. I was just like a bedroom DJ, just kind of just like mixing and stuff like that. Still learning. Like, you know, I wasn't, per- it wasn't perfect. Like my mixes weren't like that great, but, um, yeah, I just like I was just like I might as well I might as well do it because I'm very passionate about this. You know yeah. what I mean? And like, the only thing that was holding me back was fear. Hey, you know. Yeah, sometimes so, you gotta jump out of that. Plane. Sometimes you just gotta just take that leap of faith. Yeah. And, you know. I say jump out of that plane too, y'all, because my biggest fear is jumping out of a plane with the. Oh really? The parachute, <laughs> and I feel like at some point in my life I need to do that to become. I do self. feel that way because I am scared of heights, so. I yeah, don't even that's like actually being something on that's on my bucket list. <laughs> I don't even like being on planes. Really? I, when I like it's low key. I like, like the bad. window seat. I'm always like staring out, but I'm like I will not jump out. If this I love was, if I was if I was supposed to if there was something to happen and we had to Lord willing. <laughs> <laughs> you see how freaked out I'm getting oh I'm my like, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't I w I don't know if I could do it. But I yeah. feel that. I'm yeah. gonna say, I feel like we're coming to an end. I don't know if the other DJs out there, but I'm just gonna keep talking. If <laughs> okay. they can hear me, if if you're out there, come in, please, to let me know if you're here. <laughs> I don't know, but um, I wanted to just compliment you on your style, DJ. And I was listening to Thank your you. mix that you put out with. Uh, you put out a collab mix recently. Uh, with Coffee Paws. I think so. I'm not sure. I um, wish I, I, let me look it up. Yeah, I think you're talking about the one with co- Coffee Paws. But you did this thing. I love, like, because it felt like you were telling a story through the mix. And you did yeah. this thing where you slowed it down. Ooh. And you brought that, and you brought something else. And I was like, I you're love You're talking when, about the log drum. I, when I, think I tell you, I could the, not the, tell the you at all. Ta- yeah, because someone else brought that up to me, actually. And they were like, I really like that. Like, I was just like. You took control. Yeah. That that song is just like, uh, yeah. it's a vibe. So, and yeah. when you did that, I was I love when DJs like my new thing too is is just like taking the uh, the low end out every yeah. so now and then just to kind of confuse people almost. And yeah. like how you did it, you were just like so. And I was like, you're really like, obviously like anybody can make a mix, but like it's and especially what I'm learning with Diamond Pim is like how can we make it unique to ourselves? Yeah, that's that was the whole point. It's just like being able to tell a story. Yeah. Through the music that and, you know. and I heard that, believe me. Yeah. That was incredible. I love that. Thank you so much. Hold on. <laughs> it like does this like weird sound. Can the people hear it? Like barely. Okay. It happened last <laughs> episode too. You can barely hear it. Let me see something. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, whatever. It, it'll be fine. <laughs> we'll like keep nobody it going. can hear it. I must say. And so and we'll figure um, it out in the while well, here you know, we'll try to I'm multitask. Say, it'll be all good. So <laughs> lastly, so because you can't hear it too crazy. Yeah. Lastly, um, I just wanted to ask you, uh, what got you into being such a fan of music? Like, what were you listening to Ooh. early on? Um, I've always been a fan of music. Um, my family, I like. No one in my family is actually like a musician, but my mom, she just loved music. Oh my gosh. Like, I would go through all her CD, like her, you know, I would go through everything. Yeah. I would go through all her stuff. And I would just sit in the car and I, like, listen to music all day. 
um, my mom, she, she kind of like put me on to a lot of like, you know, oldies. So I'm such a, <laughs> that's why I'm so into like, you know, R&B, you know, old, no, I feel that. just like Sade. I remember when my mom, when I first heard Sade, I did not like Sade. <laughs> It'd be like that though, because we just don't <laughs> but it understand grew on it. Me. You don't understand. You know what I mean? Sometimes. My mom plays yeah. Sade all the time. Yeah, and I didn't understand it until you know what I mean. Until now, it it, it sometimes it'd be like as a young because I remember I didn't like Frank Ocean first time I heard it. Really? I was like, it's just too slow. That's just yeah. not for me. It grew and on me. And then you go, then you keep. It's something that makes you keep listening though. But I think it's just like over time, you you know, you start developing this like when you start developing interest in music, yeah. you know what I mean? You start to understand the music, like, you know what I mean? Nah, I'm almost done. It's just yeah. like, And it could be where know. you're at. You could, like, be on, like, this crazy yeah. sunset and you hear this Sade song, you're feeling so much better. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah. But, hey, y'all, um, I want to thank you so much, DJ Ole, or Ole yes. the DJ. Uh, <laughs> thank you for coming in today. We're going to have, I'll post a mix up on YouTube and SoundCloud, y'all. Uh, we're going to out of here. Peace. Thank you.